What is going on guys and girls, Vanguard here at On Point Tactical, and welcome to the very first episode of Battlefield 4 in depth on this channel. Now this time we are going to be going over the stubby and potato grips, and I'll admit, going into this, I was expecting to find that both of these grips really offered something to, to go for on the battlefield. As, as many of you know, we see the muzzle brake and the stubby grip, we see the compensator and the stubby grip, we see both of those uh, paired together quite often in that little kill card. Well, that might not be everything that we thought it was, that combination, and I'm gonna dig into why. A lot of people sort of expect, because of the d description of it on Battlefield 4, that they think that the stubby and potato grip are gonna give them 15% better automatic accuracy, which is uh, basically what it says on Battlelog and in Battlefield 4. That is not even close to true. It's giving you 15% less spread increase per round on automatic fire, meaning that if you sit on the trigger for eight bullets at the end of that burst, it's gonna be just a tiny bit more accurate than if you had done so with no grip at all or with a vertical grip or really any other barrel attachment or under barrel attachment at that point. It does give you 33% less aim down sight maximum spread, which is a very, very minor change compared to something that the vertical grips or the angled grips might do, because at that point, you're basically just hip firing whenever you reach maximum ADS accuracy. I hope that, or maximum ADS spread. I hope that none of you ever get to maximum ADS spread, because at that point, you had just as well give up firing and start all over. So, what exactly do these grips do in Battlefield, and what position do they have? Well, upon trying to figure this out, I found out that using them with the suppressor, of all things, is actually a really good combination. And here's my reasoning. As many of you know, if you use a suppressor versus the same rifle and an equally skilled player, at 50 meters, you're pretty much just going to have to take a dirt nap at that point because they're going to be doing more damage than you at distance. Well, with the spread increase per round factor decrease, you can actually take a more accurate 8 round burst than your opponent. So if you're using the suppressor at all, and you're shooting at a distance at all, you need to have the stubby grip on there because if you do that, you're going to definitely reap the benefits of having a lower spread increase per round factor and actually being able to stand a small chance versus your unsuppressed foe. However, it still isn't going to be as effective as some weapons at range. It isn't going to be as effective as, um, say, just a standard barrel in a stubby grip, or even if a uh, an engagement is versus an equally skilled player with the same exact weapon, you're probably still going to lose that engagement. But it is going to help a whole bunch with a suppressor at range. I, I can't stress enough that it actually does help quite a bit. But what reason do you have to use it beyond that? Well, on burst weapons, the stubby grip is actually quite good. The Burst weapons in Battlefield 4, as you know, are sort of underpowered at this point. There's not a lot of people willing to master their recoil patterns and make them very effective. But, the entire mechanics of a burst make it to where, at distance, if you can land all three shots, you can be deadly. You can be extremely deadly versus an automatic assault rifle. And to see those benefits, you have to make all three shots land. Well, with a lower spread increase per round factor on a burst weapon, you can get those rounds to land basically on top of each other at a distance, making the M16A4 and the M4 Carbine both extremely good for distanced engagements. I, I can't really stress that enough either. At a distance, if you're using a burst weapon, I highly advise that you try out the stubby grip. Do I recommend this grip? over other grips most of the time, not even close. The vertical grip and the ergo grip both are better than the stubby grip. I think that the angled and folding grip are better than the stubby grip. It's it's almost to the point where this grip needs a little bit of help if it's going to be very effective. Maybe even just a small 
accuracy increase before the spread increase per round factor. I think that I think that that would make it a much more usable attachment because even still, uh, if you're using an unsuppressed weapon and you're up against someone at a distance and they're using the vertical grip, they can just strafe and still have pretty good accuracy. Where if you strafe, you're gonna have not so great accuracy while aiming down sights. Uh, we'll, we'll go we'll go over the effects of the ergo and vertical grips in another episode of in depth. We're gonna save that for then. But I can tell you that I think that the vertical and ergo grips are a better choice overall for the stubby grips. But in those certain circumstances where you where you're using a suppressor at range or you're using a burst weapon, uh, you might try using the stubby grip and then uh, see if you like it. So to recap, I think that the ergo and vertical grips are a better choice than, than the stubby and potato grip. I think that both grips are rather weak compared to some other ones, and uh, you can make that decision yourself, but that is just my honest opinion. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you all on the battlefield.